Hi everybody, it's your best friend Brandon Bishop here from Asai TV. I'm going to go a little off the rails right now. I'm doing a bunch of these list videos because I'm off the road for a while. Um, don't worry, pretty soon I'll be on the road full time, like literally within the next few months. And I cannot wait because every day is going to be an adventure. Every day is going to be something different and interesting and it's not going to be me sitting at home just editing uh, non-stop, and that's what my life has been. Uh, my cat got sick, ultimately passed away, that sucks, uh, and it's really, I stayed home for her, and um, yeah. <laughs> and it's also been the winter months, which is, I usually try to stay home during the winter months anyways, but pretty soon, within a couple months, I'm gonna be on the road full time, and there will be no more, no, there won't be no more, but there'll be less, excuse me, There'll be less of these, uh, you know, list type videos, these filler, filler content. But you might actually find this one interesting because I was kind of laughing at myself. Um, if you don't know, your friend Brandon is kind of an emotional guy. I am very, uh, where my, I, I wear it on my sleeve, you know, and I, I get emotional over, like to the point of, you know, watery eyes, um, over the dumbest shit. I mean. Sometimes I'll watch one of those like Hallmark commercials or not Hallmark commercial, but you know, those commercials where, you know, the, the kid runs to the, the, the dad who just got, you know, back from overseas or something, or, you know, there's a, a cat and a dog snuggling. I'm just like, Oh, that's so sweet. That's totally me, man. I'm i uh, I'm a big old softy. And, but the one thing that really gets me are, and, and this is with everybody. Don't tell me it's not certain songs. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to give you a list of uh, 12, I think, songs that when they come on, I just, I literally most of the time will change the channel. I don't want to deal with those emotions. I don't want to deal with, you know, some of them have memories that are attached to them and I just don't want to deal with it at that point. I'll be driving down the road all alone in the van just, and then one of these songs will come on and I'll be like, Oh, come on. No. And then I either change it or I just sing and suffer and cry through it. So here's a list of 12 songs that, uh, 12 songs that bring out, uh, well, how should I title this? 12 songs that make me cry. Number 13 is from a band in Detroit, legendary Detroit band called the Trash Brats. I love the Trash Brats. Glam punk, whatever you want to call them, I don't give a shit. Trash Brats are awesome. I'm pretty sure they have stuff on Apple Music. I'm pretty sure it's not too hard to find their stuff. Go there, listen to those first two albums, Jokes on You, and uh, the other one. <laughs> I forgot the second one. Uh, whatever. Yeah, I'm a huge fan. Um, not huge enough to remember their album titles, but... Um, they, I think they had like three or four albums and all of them, all of them were good. I don't remember which album this one was on. It may have been the first one, but the song is called Landlord. And I don't remember actually crying about this song, but it described my life in Detroit when I was destitute, homeless. It just described it to a perfect T. And, uh... It's so good. It's not a, it's not a sad song, but it's just a song about struggling in Detroit. I forgot the microphones here. Freaking love Trash Brats. That's my favorite song by them. Freaking Trash Brats, Out of the Closet. That's the next album. Number 12, it's, it's kind of a gimme. It's my favorite song of all time. 
Wish You Were Here by Pink Floyd. I don't have to look it up and play it. You know the song. You probably know all the lyrics. Uh, it's just that song that I'm not exactly 100% sure what it's about. I'm pretty sure it was about Sid Barrett, uh, their old singer who, you know, went into a drug messed up brain fried you know you know the story and i'm a huge sid barrett fan i'm a huge pink floyd fan but you could take a song like wish you were here and just make it your own and put your own stories to it i read the lyrics at my grandmother's funeral um we're just two lost souls swimming in a fish bowl year after year put that towards anything you know it's like it, it make it your song. It doesn't matter what, what Roger Waters, Roger Waters, Roger Waters wrote it about. It doesn't matter. That's one of those songs that's just Play-Doh. You can just mold it and make it up into your own thing. Okay, the next song, you may have heard of the band Blue October. They're not a hugely popular band anymore. I don't think they ever were like mainstream successful. Uh, but if you're a Blue October fan, you are a Blue October fan. And I've actually kind of They've actually fallen off my radar in recent years, and I'm kind of bummed about that. But they have a song called Calling You that I kind of attributed to an ex-girlfriend who kind of introduced me to that song. But I listened to it recently, and I'm just like, oh, God. And I didn't think of her at all. Nobody w ever would. Um, <laughs> sorry, Rachel. This guy's voice is just desperate. If you're sleeping or you're dreaming, if you're dreaming or you're dreaming of me. There's a band called Anne Berlin. Look up A N B R A N B E R L I N, I think. Anne Berlin. And they have a song called Ine Inevitable. And it is the sweetest, most beautiful song. And why did I forget that, to put that on the list? Okay, now it's the top 14. <laughs> yeah. Uh, these are not honorable mentions. I can't just get away with saying, oh, it's an honorable mention, blah, blah, blah. No, this is one of the most beautiful songs I think has ever been written by, at least since the year 2000. Oh, yeah, it's so good. It's so, so freaking good. Anne Berlin, um, Inevitable. Okay, here's another song. This one's not really, I, I don't think I've ever sat here and weeped. But, you no, know, you know what I did one time? Because this song reminds me of my friend Chris Carnage. We were both huge fans of the band Wasp. Yes, I know what you're thinking. Wasp, the guy that eats the raw meat at the saw blade in his crotch and the, yes, Blackie Lawless and, yes, Wasp. Um... A lot of people don't realize that Wasp had some, like, especially after their initial, uh, you know, success in the 80s and all that, throughout the years kept to this day, keep releasing albums, and not just albums, but really good Wasp albums. And sure, you get that familiar um, Wasp rock and roll, gritty, you know, party animal freaking sound, but... There's a, a few songs that are just absolutely stunningly beautiful. And this is one of them. It's called Evermore. Like I said, my, my friend Chris Carnage, uh, he passed away a few years ago. And he was such a good dude. Really close friend of mine. And we just, I don't have a whole lot of friends that like Wasp as much as I do. That was my band, Wasp and Rat and, you know, but this song came out way afterwards. And it's still his powerful ass voice, Blackie Lawless. Just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Um, I'm not gonna play the next one because you know it by heart. It was my grandmother's favorite song and it played when I was on my way to her funeral. Um, it's Every Breath You Take by The Police. She loved that song. I know it's a song about a guy creeping on a girl. I get it. It's just, you know, <laughs> it's, it was her favorite song. She didn't care what it was about. I don't care what it's about. I just, uh, I, every time I hear that, I think of her and how much, like, she would light up when that song came on. So that still hits me in the feels. And 
She also liked All Night Long uh, by Lionel Richie. <laughs> that was like her other song. Uh, but she didn't call it All Night Long. She called it We're Gonna Have a Party. She says, I like it when he says We're Gonna Have a Party. And I'm like, yeah, that's called All Night Long. She's like, no, no, no. It's, it's, it, it, it's We're Gonna Have a Party. I'm like, Grandma, come on. It's All Night Long. We're Gonna Have a Party. Yeah. All night. It's like, come on, Grandma. I played it for her. She's like, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's still called We're Gonna Have a Party. Like, we couldn't just look it up on a phone back then. Another song, and this one's a little surprising. I am not a big Aerosmith fan. I like it. Aerosmith's like one of those bands like ACDC, Def Leppard, Metallica, where they're part of your DNA. They're part of the fabric of musical society. You have to like those, especially as a rock fan. Um, but there's one song by Aerosmith, and then I. I almost put that, don't want to close your eyes. Because I remember being, I remember that song tearing me to shreds when I was in Korea and I was away from all my family and everything. And it, for some reason it hit me when I was watching that Armageddon movie. <laughs> like the, the whole movie didn't, but you know, the whole movie's just like, ah, oh, it's Bruce Willis, whatever. Um, but when that song was like, I was like, oh God. And so I could put that as an honorable mention, but that's not the song I'm talking about. The song that I am talking about is, um, it just hits you. The funny thing is um, Bobby Blotzer from the band Rat. I know I talk a lot about Stephen Pierce because we've worked together, but I've also worked with Bobby Blotzer on those projects. And I remember when he was in Rat with a different singer and they would play at my club, the Asylum in, in Lawton, Oklahoma. They played there like three times. I remember I was playing pool with Bobby Blotzer. And um, so I'm looking it up real quick. And uh, he was just like, that song came on in, in, the, in the bar. And he was just like, God, this is such a good song. And it made me realize that, wow, he's right. This is an amazing song. This. That voice is just so, the, the desperation is just, it's just screaming it like, oh such a phenomenal that that's my favorite Earl Smith song song my favorite favorite okay I'm not gonna play this one it's you know <laughs> I love the cure I love all their songs they, there's a certain melancholy uh, aspect to all their lyrics uh, they're always about missing somebody or uh, losing somebody or you know, there's always something wrong in a cure song that's why it was you know, the emo goth kings, but, um, the song picture of you, pictures of you, oh, it takes me back to a certain person who was a huge Cure fan. And, uh, I won't say who it is, but I was okay with us breaking up until I heard that song. And I actually did this cheesy little thing where I made a video of, uh, you know, all of our pictures together and put it over that song. Uh, it's pretty sweet actually. It should have worked. All right, this song, um, I've played this song in uh, One-Eyed Buffalo with my, my best friend Dave, my guitar player, my brother, and he's left us. It's um, it's three years ago at this point. Oh, I, yeah. <laughs> and he'll come up later too um, because I'm going to play one of our songs. But damn it, uh, losing him is the... Him, my grandmother, and my cat. Three hardest things I've ever had to deal with in my entire life. And, uh, I mean, there's been lots of other friends. I'm not putting them on a scale, okay? But I'm just saying it's... That was uh, my, my best friend for 21 years. We wrote albums together. We spent time in Korea together, Oklahoma together. We just... He was my go-to guy, man. Um, but there's a song that we played, and it's actually called That Song by one of my all-time favorite bands, Big Wreck. And I'm in uh, Denver with my friend Jim, seeing Big Wreck, first time seeing him live, and that song came on, <laughs> and immediately, shit, this is going to be hard. I've been crying so much on this show lately between the cat stuff, and I got to knock it off, man. We got to get into some good positive shit. I mean, this is fun, but it's insane. Um, when they started playing that song, those, those notes, those first notes... I uh, I lost it in the middle of public. I've <laughs> only Pink Floyd has ever made me cry in a concert. 
I will never forget being on stage with Dave playing this song because he nailed it. And it just gave you so much energy when that riff started. It was like, oh. So beautiful. Okay, no copyrights, please. Here's a silly one. Um, and this is actually the song that motivated me to make this list. Uh, it's not the, the saddest song ever. It reminds me of, uh, it just reminds me of that whole like mid to late 80s growing up. Like having girlfriends, like my girl, my first ever girlfriend's name was Lisa Matzko's and she passed away, um, killed herself for whatever reason, uh, long after I knew her, but she always had issues. Even when I did know her and I was dating her, she was like my first, uh, my first thing, you know, my first like, Hey, we're having sex and we're a couple and we're, you know, it's Brandon and Lisa versus the world. And anyway, I, um, this song was hot at the point. And it's, uh, it's a cheesy power ballad, man, but who cares? Some of those cheesy power ballads were like the best songs ever freaking written. Argue with me on it, you'll lose. Skid Row, I Remember You. Oh my God, that guitar, that freaking, I, I gotta play it for a second. That guitar, that acoustic guitar, it's just, it's, <laughs> it's just, are you kidding me? It's so simple, but it just takes me personally back to that time. And, and then Sebastian's voice. Even though. A YouTube show, which I do a lot. I do, honestly. Hang on. And uh, it was uh, a guy and his daughter. <laughs> and the guy is like my age, and he's introducing his daughter to all these different bands. And he played that song for her. And <laughs> being that guy with my son and trying to introduce him to things, which he could give a shit about, but I knew exactly what was going on in his head. And he's... And, he was just like, please like this song. Please just, just, this is, this is a part of me, you know, like I'm sharing with you and the daughter just look at me. I'm, I'm welling up. Isn't it stupid? Um, the daughter just like, was just, my God, this is so good. And you know, and Sebastian was so hot and, and for some reason, I'm just like sitting on the couch, just like, kind of like I'm doing right now. And I'm just like crying. I'm not like, <laughs> not like that. I'm just like, I just started coming down. I'm like, and then I realized like, I'm that guy. And I'm, I'm you know, I would kill to have that bond with my son. Like, or even my daughter and I already have it. Um, but it was just, it was such a special little, like, <laughs> just a warm little emotional thing between the two. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, knock it off. Um, the next song, um, I, like I said, these are really in no particular order. Pink Floyd is my favorite band. I have their stuff tattooed on me, okay? I mean, there's bound to be something pink. Right there, there's my box set. There's bound to be something Pink Floyd you look at and see in every direction. I love the band. One of their least popular item, albums of all time was The Final Cut, uh, which was ultimately one of my all-time favorite ones because I'm a huge fan of just Roger Waters telling me stories. And that's basically his first, it says it's Pink Floyd, but it's basically his first solo album. There's a song on there, the, t the title track, The Final Cut, which is just, it's so haunting. And I remember discovering this uh, album and just being like immersed. That's the only word I can think of. I was just headphones on as loud as I can get them, listening to every syllable, every beat, and just going, it was like a ex religious experience or something. I don't do religion, but it's just, that's the closest thing I can think of that I learned like an actual, true, honest, real religious experience would be like, this is the line here that used to always
radio that only had like right instead of stereo it only had like mono and uh listening to it now you can hear so much more like because <laughs> everything's in stereo now and i remember like listening to these albums years later going there's like all kinds of stuff going on i didn't know about any of this stuff so i'm like yeah i was poor <laughs> but the final cut by pink floyd right in the feels <sighs> okay the next two songs are cheesy by some standards to me i think they're awesome hair metal power ballads by two of the most infamous hair metal bands to make fun of uh if you're stupid um winger <laughs> and faster pussycat same girl lisa when this winger song came out uh there was a song called miles away and i i gotta play a little bit of it i just uh oh man i just remember when we broke up this was the breakup song that ruined me for an entire however long it took me to Winger was so underrated, man. Kip Winger's an amazing singer. I got to see them live here in Colorado Springs about 10 years ago. And they were fan-freaking-tastic. Original lineup, too. Like, Oh, my gosh. That is one of those songs, dude. As much as I love it, boop. <laughs> Sorry. I can't do it, man. And then um, Faster Pussycat. Here's, I, I like songs like uh, Bathroom Wall and you know, Cat House and things like that. I, I like them. I don't love them. But they came out with a power ballad during their 15 minutes. And uh, it was uh, brutal, man. Like, just effing brutal. It's called uh, House of Pain by Faster Pussycat. I sound like Casey Kasem, don't I? This is House of Pain by Faster Pussycat. Maybe not. And here's the thing, like, I was never close with my dad. I never had a dad. Um, I have issues uh, with being a dad, especially right now. Um, there's been other, you know, not to get too personal, but I've had other children that are not in my life and that sucks and it was if it was my fault i'd tell you i'll take the blame of whatever it is but this song is about a broken home so it's like i always listen to this from the kids perspective and uh i mean tammy down can't sing but Anyways, oh my god, I just thought of another one for the same reason. I'm just going to honorary mention this one, though it should very much be high on the list. I can't believe I just thought of this one, so it'll be a top 15. Um, Father of Mine by Everclear. Everclear? Yeah, Everclear. I almost said Everlast. That's a whole different thing. Uh, Everclear with, was one of my favorite bands. Uh, love those guys. But Father of Mine, I can't freaking listen to. There's one line in the bridge it's always the bridge that kicks my ass um why didn't i remember this song just wondering what happened to his dad and, and i tried not to ever ever be that dad so good man anyway let's get to number one and it's going to be a familiar voice because it's going to be my voice and it's a song that my buddy dave wrote dave lukasik like i said he's been my my best friend up until he passed three years ago and he sent me this song and i was just like get out of my head dude you know i i wrote these lyrics down and it was i didn't even give him direction i didn't say hey you know, do something like that. Da, 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 da. Um, and he just sent it to me. That's just how it was with me and him. 
I'd have something in my head, and then unbeknownst, without asking, he'd send me a piece of music. And then we'd go redo the music and, you know, go to his house and sing. And he sent me, I have an album worth of music right now to sing over, and I've been thinking about doing it on that. I'd rather do it, I don't know, man. It's, it's so hard. It's so hard without him there. It's, it's, this is the hardest song I'll ever have to sing. It, it was originally written for my son, and um, just telling him to, Take some time and look around and enjoy your life, you know, because it's all going to go away soon. And, um, but now it's for Dave and, and me and my son and his daughter and his wife, my daughter, my grandson. This is a song that's so beautiful and I'm so afraid that I'm not good enough for it. And Dave would be the one that would sit next to me and after every take and go, oh man, come on, you can do better than that. And I need that. <laughs> That's how he talked to you. Oh, come on, man. You can do better than that. He'd be sitting there with a beard. He'd think for a second. Fucking love that guy so much. This is called One More Memory. My band is with him, just the two of us, was called One-Eyed Buffalo. We had other players, but they kind of came and went. But we never stopped. We wrote Last Room on the Right. That album's available on iTunes. I have a couple songs that I have completed. Um, Coco Beach is one of them, which is, I have a video on YouTube. Look up Coco Beach, One-Eyed Buffalo. You can watch that. And uh, I love that song. It's another one that he just kind of came out and I was like, dude, I'm trying to write a song about this girl I hung out with on, at, in Coco Beach. And then you send me this song that sounds like a freaking beach jam.
depressed as freaking hell. How about you? <laughs> oh, jeez, man. What can I do to turn this around real quick? All right, nothing. Just stop. <laughs> Just stop. Yeah, man, thanks for watching. Sorry I'm over here blubbering again and crying and... Damn, Brandon. I grow a set already, brother. <sighs> Anyways, thank you for watching. I'm Brandon. See you next time.